Hey, what is up, guys? It's Masterleaf here with a Command and Conquer free Kane's Wrath commentary yet again. And uh, today we have Kimisabi playing as the Cyan GDI and Green Zero. Yes, the one and only Green Zero. He's going to be playing as well in this game here. And the map is Small Town USA. A relatively unplayed map in Kane's Wrath. Uh, in, you know, in compared to, compared to Torment Rift, that is, it's pretty underplayed, and uh, it is pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but uh, really, I think there's just too many obstacles in it for my liking. But you know, that's just personal taste. Uh, it can produce some good games, though, good replays, which is always good. And Green Zero here, he's going to be in the bottom of it, and uh, Kimizabi in the top. Gonna make two engineers, two engineers indeed. Yep. Uh, although Kimasabi, he did place his barracks a little closer to that spike there, so he will be uh, capturing. This spike will be slightly delayed compared to Green Zero, who's capturing it now. So he'll get a you know marginally better income than Kimasabi because he captured this spike a little bit sooner. Then again, it's about the decision making. It's not about the economy. Whoever has the, uh, it, I mean, it is about the economy. But you know, you can, you can make decisions, better decisions than your opponent, and the economy won't really matter, unless, of course, you're a hexalamer, and hexapod just owns everything. Anyways, Kimasabi. He's going for a second harvester, second refinery as well for both players. Um, Green Zero has a watchtower queued. Doesn't want uh, any scouts in his base, or in particular a what um, foxhole. Those are, I guess are quite annoying to deal with as GDI and Nod. Not so bad for Screen though, because uh, Buzzers clear garrisons. Although Buzzer hives, they don't really kill vehicles like unlike the watchtowers. So there's pro pros and cons to everything. And uh, what, what the hell? What, the, what was that? Was that a uh, bunker that just got degarrisoned by a harvester? That is a naughty bug, a very naughty bug, because uh, what what you can do is um, send a unit that can crush infantry on a path through a bunker while the rifleman squad are digging it, and regardless, the rifleman squad inside will get crushed by the by the by the walker or the harvester or whatever it is you've got. And uh, Kimasabi's people are going to come in here. He's going to see everything that Green Zero's got. And he knows that Green Zero's going to be pumping out Predator tanks. And he's sending them, uh, send them on what looks like to be a rally point to Kimasabi's base. So Kimasabi will see that as a, a some aggression now. And he's going to have to respond quickly to deal with those Predator tanks. And uh, Green Zero microing that Predator tank away does not want to get killed by that garrisoned rocket Millis missile squad yeah there we go missile squad uh, yeah there we go retreating that predator the tank there good micro management that's what he always that's what he always emphasizes inside of his VODs micro management and of course having the war factory uh, close to your refinery so the harvesters get free repairs that is a meme in Green Zero's VODs. And uh, he's, uh, Kimisabi's going to send his MCV to expand now. Green Zero, though, already expanded. He's got uh, Structure Cued. Probably going to be a, another refiner out I don't know. Maybe a War Factory. He should definitely go for a War Factory since Kimisabi has now got two War Factories. Yeah, there we go. So Green Zero does not want to get out macroed here. Going for two War Factories as well. Although I'd say Kimisabi has a slight advantage since his war factories are in his main base and he can rally to Green Zero's expansion a lot sooner than Green Zero can with uh, his war factory down here in his main base. And uh, Kimisabi now he's going to place down his second refinery. It looks like he's stalled, stalled for cash a little bit. He still does have Tiberium here. Both players still got uh, some Tiberium left in their natural. Uh, and Green Zero has been trans he transferred one harvester there by the looks of things. And uh, some Predator tanks having a, an engagement here. Uh, it's all about positioning really. These structures make it extremely difficult I guess to 
to resolve battles and um, both players just you know, hesitant to engage but Green's already, you know, he's like, hey, I'm just going to retreat there. I've got one tank left. <laughs> so that's not much of a retreat, is it? He's uh, he, he, he has one tank remaining and uh, a couple tanks here to protect his expansion and Kimisabi now he knows that Green Zero's army is in his expansion, in Green Zero's expansion, so he will go for Green Zero's base now and take out some of some of uh, Green Zero's structures, which hold little value at this point, really. I mean, he's, yeah, he doesn't have any tech structures here, like Command Post or Tier 3. Tier 3, I wouldn't expect to see that now. Maybe, sure, maybe later, I don't know. And uh, Kim's army now placing down his second refinery. He's got four harvesters there. Uh, you could send the rest of his harvesters now there now, since he's got four harvesters at his main field, and his main field is depleted. So sending those harvesters there now would be great. And Green Zero going to lose this base here. I don't think he cares to be honest, since uh, his base is already up here. He just needs to replace some power plants, which I guess he's doing now. Going to build a couple power plants because the ones now he will lose some down here. Tanks rolling in going to finish off those power plants. Green Zero needs to keep a hold of those, really, if he wants to place de base defenses. And uh, Green Zero now, he's going to be training rocket squads, and looks like he's going to put them inside the gas level structures, which is a good idea, a really good idea, since they can shoot from them, and they also a get a range buff. Uh, the tide is changing, the tide of battle is changing though, and Green Zero is now going on offensive, taking out Kimisabi's main base, so Kimisabi and Green Zero exchanging in this regard, they're both going to lose their main base now, they're only down to their expansions, and Green Zero, he's gone for a command post, what's uh, Kimisabi got, he's going for a command post as well, a couple uh, barracks is being uh, deployed there, microing the rocket squad so they don't get crushed by the Predator tanks, that's good micromanagement there by Kimisabi, and Kimisabi it's going to come out easily on top here since Kimisabi has got his army in position and those Predator tanks of Green Zero will get cleaned up easily. Um, that uh, garrison is garrisoned with a rocket squad. Finally, not shooting at the Predator tank. I'm not sure if the Predators have less, more range than the rocket squads. It looks like they do, actually. Did not know that. Then again, I do not play GDI. And uh, he, Kimisabi's got a couple uh, rifleman squads here, um, rocket squads, and Predator tanks. So he's mixing up his army. He's got interesting mix of units. Make it difficult for Green Zero to counter this army composition. He won't have to. He won't just have to rely on going for the Predator tanks and the rockets. He's going to have to go for anti-infantry now. And. Uh, those garrisons just making, causing uh, Kimisabi a whole lot of pain here, aren't they? Taking out tanks one by one, one tank going down, another tank likely to go down. That's a veteran predator tank there. So if he gets that, that's even better for Green Zero. And wow, look at the range of these garrisonable structures. It's crazy. And uh, both players. I was about to say do not have tech, but yes, I they do have tech now. And um, I expect them to utilize that by going for Firehawks. And uh, it looks like Green Zero does have Orcas here. Not paying any attention though, losing two before shoot deciding to shoot with a Harvester. And he will get one Harvester here, I think. And no, no, he's not going to get a single Harvester. Wow, that was a complete loss for Green Zero. Green Zero losing uh, out there. And uh, where are Kimisabi's orcas? He still does have three. They're on a the deck. And uh, he does have his army here. Going to make a move for Green Zero's base. And he's going to call in what looks to be the sharpshooter team. Exactly. And uh, those will clean up the infantry. No bothers. But, uh, you know, these tanks can do the same job for him. And sharpshooters. I think they can call for bombardment just not from within the hammerheads to my knowledge anyways that's very subtle in-game knowledge uh, no one ever puts snipers inside of hammerheads anyways uh, and uh, more predators being sniped down by those orcas 
And he looks like he's got a full deck of walkers here, unless he trained one Firehawk, which is nowhere to be seen on the minimap. I'm not even going to bother trying and look for units on the minimap, because it's just so, so rubbish. And those tanks clumping up going to get some area of effect, which is delicious for Kimisabi. Going to take out a couple of those Predator tanks with a couple rockets and uh, he doesn't, he's not, can't decide what he's going to do here. He's going to attack those Preds, but then no, he's not. He's going to go back to his airfield now and um, resupply on ammunition, which is what he needs to do. And uh, Kimisabi now, he's got a Juggernaut. One lone Juggernaut and a Mammoth Tank. Mammoth Tanks, uh, in my opinion, suck without the Railgun upgrade. And uh, But they do have more armor than the Predator Tanks, so that's always a consolation. Uh, looks like uh, some fire, Firehawks had a little engagement there. Green Zero has two. Uh, how is Kimizawi doing for Firehawk count? He's got none, so he's going to have to rebuild those or face Marcus Annihilation in the skies. Really, if you let GDI have the, uh, the air, then you're likely to get pounded by the hammerheads and whatnot, walkers, you name it. I mean, we, we observed that from the last game that, I've, that I had done, that I botted. Bravo just dominating the game with aircraft, just aircraft alone and a couple infantry squads. That was pretty, pretty awesome. Shows what having the air superiority can uh, do. And uh, Green Zero. Looks like his Firehawks were just chilling out over there. Weren't expecting Kimisabi's Firehawks to engage them. But they do get backstabbed there. And he Green Zero loses two. I don't think... And Kimisabi loses none there. So, not good for... What do you call it? Green Zero. Green Zero now. He's got one uh, Firehawk. He's going to resupply. And uh, a couple of Predator tanks there shooting at this power plant, which is stranded out in the middle of nowhere, really. Well, not stranded in the middle of nowhere. It's uh, got a uh, refinery here. He does have built radius. And um, he could place a Sonic emitter there if he does have his MCV, but his MCV is packed up, so he cannot do so. And this mob will come in anyways to finish up the job. Deny Kimisabi the Tiberium here. Green Zero, though. He does realize that his uh, Tiberium situation is in dire need, so he needs to set up an, an, an expansion quickly to resolve that. His economy is not doing so well now, and uh, but he does have a refinery here now. Probably could send a couple more harvesters there to finish up the green Tiberium. And Juggernaut here. He's going to recall that to the battle. And uh, Kimisabi now, he's got uh, a couple jugs that are scattered really does not want his army to be scattered like this because they will it will get picked off pretty easily he's gonna have to rally soon and uh, those firehawks gonna re rearm themselves with a certain loadout not sure what they are they're gonna get off the deck anyways because this mob's gonna come in and destroy destroy the airfield and uh, those mammoths as I was saying they can take some punishment but uh, this mob is just too too powerful. It's got two zone trooper squads inside of it. And on top of that, it's got its sonic, triple barreled sonic gun, which does so much damage. And those jugs are going to be a massive, massive problem for Kimisabi because they are so well positioned for Green Zero. Easily, and he easily takes down those uh, that juggernaut there. Uh, more jugs here. Going to take out the mob. Marv goes down. Green Zero missing a Marv now. So no more epic units for you, Green Zero. You're going to have to rely on these Juggernauts and uh, whatever you're going to build next, which is a complete mystery. Looks like go, it looks like he's going to go for some aircraft. Yep, going to queue some aircraft up. And uh, Kimisabi is going to repair this Mammoth tank. He desperately needs to keep that because really he's got... 
little Tiberium. There is little Tiberium left on the map. And, he, and Kimisabi, he is in possession of the only neutral structure left. So, <coughs> Green Zero will have to replace, will have to uh, destroy that Tiberium spike and deny Kimisabi the income that will that will that will give him in the long run. And these spikes, they do end up along in a, a long game like this. People have us just being bugged there. Well, not bugged. I don't think they're bugged. It's just spazzing out a little bit. Waiting to dock inside the refinery. And uh, Green Zero. Green Zero and Kimisabi having a juggernaut duel here. Looks like Kimisabi does win dec decisively, actually. And also taking out the Hus, so he doesn't want Green Zero to recapture those Hus there. Uh, and uh, Green Zero, yeah, he does capture one Hus there, so that's great. Although he is uh, over outnumbered by the uh, amount of jugs that Kimisabi does have. Kimisabi jugs two of them on uh, half health. And uh, he does have a couple of Tiberium crystals here, so he's done really well uh, to regrow this field. Probably anticipating the game to go this long, so he decided, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this field regrow." So Green Zero is uh, gonna be out of Tiberium, while I'm gonna have money at my disposal. And Green Zero, if he keeps sacking units like this now, he will be uh, at a severe disadvantage. And uh, Kimasabi here, he's got a couple mammoths. Looks like he's upgrading something. That wouldn't surprise me if it's railguns because he does have three units here that could uh, take advantage of that upgrade. Although it is quite expensive, four thousand dollars. Yeah, a tad overpriced in my opinion. And wow, Firehawk getting destroyed there. These garrisonable structures just doing so much damage throughout this game. And uh, an orca gonna be a naval casualty here. And boom, gets destroyed. So you want to stay away from those really at all costs, or try and de-garrison them with a grenade squad or garrisonable clearing unit. And Green Zero, he's going to chill with his Marv. Going to put two zone trooper squads inside of it and an engineer, likely to put another engineer inside of it. Yeah, there we go. And uh, what's Kimisabi got? He's got five juggernauts here. He's going to call in the Oxford Ox transport. So, probably looking to do some sneaky MCV grab or something. He could go around the side and uh, try and sneak that into Green Zero's base. Would be just amazing if he could take a construction yard with that tactic. It, I know for a fact that it works better in Tiberium Wars since there is no capture delay with the engineers. Which is kind of gay in my opinion, but... Uh, Luckily, they resolved that in Kane's Wrath. And uh, Harvester being shot at by this Orca. I don't think Harvester is, is a big target now because there's really little Tiberium for them to harvest, really. So, it won't really matter. But uh, here we go. We've got uh, Shockwave Artillery coming down. And that was enough to distract Kimisabi from losing from this uh, Ox Transport here that does get taken out by the anti-aircraft battery. And... Uh, these juggernauts now, with the support of that uh, shockwave artillery, do manage to take out a fair sum of Kimisabi's juggernauts and Green Zero now. He does have the upper hand, or maybe not, He does. Kimisabi does have walkers. Did not see them being trained. Kind of gutsy making walkers while your opponent's gone for the Firehawks. But uh, that definitely did uh, pay out for him there. And he does have a couple juggernauts. I don't think Green Zero was expecting him to have such a big army. But uh, you, as you can see here, that has that that was uh, able to happen because uh, Kimisabi was harvesting this field, which had regrown to a fair size. And Green Zero, good job by clearing out the husks. Don't want uh, his jug number to go any higher, although it is high now. It's about five juggernauts. And in a game where every unit counts, that is a lot of juggernauts. And Green Zero will want to to uh, decrease that number somehow. He does have an orca here. Going to take out one juggernaut there. 
And uh, as you can see, allied units do not crush husks. The, for any husks, it's only enemy units that crush husks. And uh, two juggernauts being taken out by the orcas. His airfields are all the way across here. And he does have firehawks, so he's got an airfield with two firehawks and two orcas. No veterancy on any of those units except this firehawk, which is veteran. Still having juggernaut battles. Uh, this juggernaut, with the support of this orca, will get taken out. There we go. And the orca gets a promotion, so it's now veteran. He wants to watch that. That doesn't get destroyed there. And luckily for him, he will just barely manage to keep that orca alive. He wants to keep that alive at all costs. And uh, make sure that he doesn't capture those husks. Come on. Uh, yeah. Just in the nick of time, he takes the husk out before the engineer goes in and uh, recaptures it. Want to take out that husk there, Green Zero. And uh, more Firehawks having a battle there. Firehawks. And it looks like Green Zero has more aircraft than Kemosabi at the current time. A veteran Firehawk for him. And his map does get taken out, which is a huge blow for Green Zero. He really wanted to keep that alive. That's going to be that's, that really was his only meat shield. Well, Kimisabi now he's got a couple jugs, and that jug does get taken out. So the juggernaut now, juggernaut count for both players is going down. It's it's low now. Uh, Green Zero does have one jug remaining. Uh, he wants to recapture that. Maybe train a grenade squad to degarrison this rocket, this uh, garrison with a rocket squad inside of it. And also has a rifleman squad, so you'll definitely have to replace, have to uh, clear out those garrisons if he's going to be planning to recapture those husks. And that husk d looks like it was um, crushed by the harvester. Or well, no, not 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 his harvester, of course. It probably was destroyed by Kimisabi. And Kimisabi, what's he got? Got two orcas and a couple harvesters. He's got a lot of harvesters. He's got four, four or so, five harvesters. Again, uh, not really doesn't really matter at this stage. And uh, Green's are going to lose his command post there, so he can't uh, rebuild an airfield if this if he loses this one now. And doesn't uh, cast the sonic repulsion field on that aircraft in the airfield there, so he'll have to take every step to make sure that that airfield stays still. And uh, these juggernauts here. Deciding to retreat, there isn't much there to stop them really. I mean, perhaps he's scared that Green Zero will snipe them down with these orcas. And speaking of orcas, he does have an elite orca there and a veteran orca. So if he if he somehow ranks those up to heroic, then that would be just crazy. As you can see, uh, those firehawks there cleaning out the rest of Kimisabi's air and Kimisabi is going to ditch the idea of continuing to go for Firehawks speaking of which doesn't even have a tech center so he can't really make them anyways <coughs> uh, what, I'd, what I'd strongly recommend is that he goes for rocket squads there we go going for the rocket squads to support those jugs and uh, the rocket squads will be uh, uh, enough to scare those fire orcas away from unleashing their salvos on that juggernaut. Although that juggernaut there, he could snipe it down if he had a heroic orca. And speaking of heroic orca, he does have a heroic orca, so he has to make this really count now. Maybe go for a, a hammerhead to clean up this infantry. This infantry, uh, he has nothing to respond to this infantry with, so this infantry is gonna be a big problem for Green Zero, and Green Zero, he takes out that Juggernaut there, so that Juggernaut gonna get taken out, and uh, not losing any Orcas now, but uh, those Juggernauts now, those uh, Predator tanks, they're gonna be shooting at this airfield, and this airfield will get taken out now. He has to he has to save this airfield at all costs, or the airfield, if the airfield goes down, those that Orcas will get destroyed, and the Orcas get destroyed, oh man. That is crazy. That is not good, and I bet Green Zero, is going to be so sad now, just losing to his heroic orca just after he got it. Oh, and that that even brings a tear to my eyes, seeing that. And uh, 
his construction yard is under attack. And uh, yeah, Green Zero surrenders, realizing that he has not much going for him after that. Uh, loss of the airfield there and his uh, ruining aircraft and aircraft aircraft in that game proved to be really 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 powerful and uh, mandatory in the in the GDI mirrors as you can see uh, both players went for that heavy macro in the start going for the dual war factory predator spam uh, with the uh, support of infantry both players went for the infantry uh, green zero made good use of the garrisonable structures by placing the rocket squads inside of them uh, and then he went for the tech, got the Firehawks and the Marv. The Juggernauts also were great, were a great choice and uh, excellent in the end by Kimisabi. Uh, making sure that, that, that his uh, expansion Tyrion field had regrown to maximum capacity. So, well not maximum capacity, but he had it regrown to a, to a, a healthy size for him to harvest again. And Green Zero, he had nothing to really stop that amount of income that Kimisabi had in the end as you can see in the in the resources graph that uh, Kimisabi he had the advantage in the last in the last um, part of the game Green's are ahead though at the nine minute mark that's because he had three refineries and uh, Kimisabi on two uh, Green Zero though he uh, had not much not much resources after that he uh, left his expansion a little bit late and uh, that he lost I reckon he lost that mob too many marvs in that game really but uh, really really well played by both players uh, fairly entertaining a lot of transitioning in that game and yeah anyway so uh, that was uh, a good game to watch pretty entertaining uh, as you can see rifleman squad favorite unit by both players Probably uh, there was really no favorite unit for either player because who who want, who whose favorite unit is the rifleman squad? That's just that's just lame. And uh, kill death ratio, Green Zero got higher kill death ratio, but uh, as you can see in the resources, did not gain did not have enough resources to wrap up it in the end. Doesn't really matter though because Kimisabi was the uh, victor, and uh, he won the game. Anyways, uh, if you did enjoy this, uh, I would uh, really, 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 really appreciate you liking the video and uh, it's up to you, but if you want to see more content, then uh, subscribe and uh, yeah, thanks very much. Anyways, this is uh, Master Leaf and I'm signing out. Peace.